Hey folks and welcome to another video of mine. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Shoyun Chien 7. Yes, this is uh, the seventh installment of uh, this, this very popular series from China. Having said that, you don't really need to play any of the previous games. So it's not like uh, the story is being continued or um, you have to play the previous six titles to experience this one and its full potential. This, even if it's played as a standalone game, you're still gonna be able to enjoy it quite a lot in fact. And there's quite a lot that I need to talk about when it comes to this game. So let's first start off by talking about um, this whole series by the way. Now this is a Taiwanese role-playing video game. In fact, this whole series. And uh, I believe there are some shows also in China. However, I'm not very sure about it. There, there are some live action shows now this game has been developed by a studio called Domo Studio and um, also a uh, studio is based in Taiwan of course. Now what the game does is it incorporates a lot of uh, Chinese mythology and a lot of these historical figures and events um, from China and um, if you don't know about it, Shua Yuan Qian or the sword the Shuayuan Qian sword was wielded by the Yellow Emperor of ancient China. So that's what this 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 game is about. It, it does talk about this sword and um, what the sword can do for you, the power that it holds, etc. And apart from that, there is a very heartwarming tale that is told through uh, the eyes of its three main characters. Now, we're going to get to that very very soon but before we get started with the story and the plot etc and talk about that um, I actually wanted to play this game because off late I've been playing a lot of Chinese action RPGs so if you've been following my channel just a few weeks back I uh, had the opportunity to play Sword and Fairy 7 and uh, coincidentally that was Sword and Fairy 7. This is uh, also the seventh installment of this popular game. However, in both the cases, you don't really need to play any of the previous games, as I mentioned earlier. And apart from that, I also got an opportunity to play Gujian 3 just a few weeks back. Now, there are some parallels between these games that can be drawn because, of course, all of them are Chinese action RPGs. They are all third person games. They have RPG heavy elements like side quests, main quests, but each of them has its own, you could say, character, its own spirit. And uh, this particular game, let me tell you about it. Now, it starts off by this beautiful cutscene and um, you could even see, you know, some of the information like um, people who have worked on this game, the developers, etc., their information. And here it starts off with this boy walking in this village and this boy is actually the main character his name is Zhao and um, this other girl the small girl that you are communicating with she is also one of the main characters that you come across later on in the game so um, there are three main characters in total um, that you would experience um, throughout the entirety of this game there's actually even a fourth one but I don't consider him to be really a main character more like a supporting cast. So you've got Zhao, who's the main character. And apart from Zhao, you even have Chu Hong, this girl that you're seeing on screen, who you will meet again later on in the game. And then you also have your sister, Xiang. So these three main characters is what you see across the game, you know, when you're playing them. And it does a very good job of building a relationship between these three main characters. Now, apart from these three main characters, however, I really could not think about any other supporting cast apart from maybe um, yeah there's there's there are a couple you could say supporting uh, characters and even the antagonist of the game I think was uh, pretty forgettable <laughs> doesn't leave an impact or a mark in your mind so um having said that let's start off with how this game looks now this game looks beautiful as you can see on screen the reflections, the lighting, etc. Everything works pretty well. I mean, it's a beautiful game to look at. Now, this game did come out in 2020. So, 
what I did was I started playing these Chinese RPGs with Sword and Fairy 7, which came out in 2021. Then I went to, I believe 2017 or 2018 when Gujian 3 was released. And then I fast forwarded again to 2020 when this game, the Shuoyan uh, Qian was released. And um, for a game which has been released in 2020, it looks pretty. There are quite a lot of levels that uh, you will come across. Although it does not have that variety of levels that uh, Gujian 3 offered or even Sword and Fairy 7 offered, it's not a bad game to look at. However, the color palette I would say is um, not as wide when compared to the other two games that I've played. I would say that most of the levels, they are pretty much the same in terms of the um, color tones. Yeah. Um, except maybe a couple. So I'm not complaining about how this game looks. This game looks great, by the way. I mean, it, it looks fantastic, but it's just that it doesn't have the same variety that I got with Sword and Fairy 7 or with Gujian 3. I know there are going to be a lot of comparisons with these couple of games. And apart from that, even with the Final Fantasy 7 series. Now, this game, well, apart from how beautiful it looks, it also tells a very strong story mainly a relationship between a brother and a sister. So that's what the heart of the story is all about. You know, your relationship with your sister. Um, well, for some reason, your sister got injured. And um, I, I know I'm kind of, you know, spoiling the whole thing, but uh, just giving you a little bit of information. You are on this, you could say this journey where you're trying to help your sister recover her human body all right so that's what the game is all about and uh, the things that you will do in the game it's all to get to that end point where you will be able to secure this human body for your sister now how you do that the people that you come across the enemies that you have to slay in the process that's what forms the crux of the story you could say and that's what this game is all about just like any other rpg Side quests, main quests, yep, it's all there. Upgrading your weapons, although it's it's not as good as Sword and Fairy 7 or even Gujian 3, but the UI is pretty. I think the UI, the user interface looks prettier than um, something like Gujian 3 maybe. The UI was definitely better and they are all in English. The game, however, is in Chinese. Subtitles are of course available, so you will be able to follow the story by reading the subtitles. Now, just like any other RPGs, if you um, indulge yourself in these side tasks, then of course the game will uh, go on for long, but overall I was able to complete this game in less than 14 hours. Yeah, that's it. You do have a lot of action as well. Um, you have a mix of, you know, fighting animals, human creatures, monsters, etc. And there's quite a lot of action that you will actually come across. There are some real time events as well. You've got to press the buttons at the right time or um, you're going to be slaughtered. <laughs> so, um, yeah, apart from these real time events, apart from these basic enemies, you could say, you also have these um, great boss battles. Now, about these boss battles, some of these boss battles are really difficult. I mean, the difficulty level, even if you're playing this on the easy mode, I would say, some of these boss fights are extremely difficult. And um, you have to spend a lot of time and you have to upgrade um, and you have to stock up. More than the upgrade, I think stocking up on those um, medicinal vials, that's, I guess, you know, more important than really upgrading your uh, equipment like your sword or your armor, etc. So a word of advice, do stock up, all right? Keep purchasing those medicinal vials. So. These boss fights, they are all about patience and um, the difficulty level you would find is um, it's, 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 I would say, quite tough for some bosses. Now, this is one of the things that I really hated in this game. There is no jump button. So you really have to cling on to these uh, edges and then you, you have to climb these edges by pressing a button. I found that uh, whole thing to be very repetitive in the sense the animation, etc. And it's, I personally think that it's a waste of time. Now, apart from that, there are a lot of cutscenes in this game. For people who do not enjoy cutscenes, well, hey, <laughs> you're in for a ride where you get to see all these cutscenes. 
So uh, of course you have an option of skipping them, but um, then you would lose track of what's happening with the story. So I will recommend that you still watch these cutscenes with those subtitles. Now overall, it tells a good story. I mean, I have no major complaints with this game, except for the fact that the side quests, they're not that great. The um, levels, even if you fast travel, all right, you have to see those repetitive animations when you're fast traveling. I think it was irrelevant, you know, just press the button and get on with it. And when you fast travel, you know, there are load times as well, but more irritating than the load times is actually seeing those animations. You can skip those animations, of course, but hey, I still have to press that button <laughs> to skip the animation. So that's one of my gripes with this game. Apart from that, the other gripe is, you know, the whole climbing bit, no jump button, etc. I kind of find it really weird or strange in an action RPG not to have a jump button. Having played so many of them, you know, these Western RPGs and even these last few Chinese RPGs that you uh, that I played, which in fact, with this game, it completes the trinity of these Chinese RPGs. So I kind of found it very weird not to have the jump button. And... Um, uh, the first three or four hours, I really struggled with it. You know, I mean, I was I was pressing the A button on my joystick or my controller just to jump, but hey, I couldn't. <laughs> that was weird. Apart from that, um, you only can control this one character. All right, Zhao. So even when you are in a in the heat of the battle, you can't switch between characters like I could in Sword and Fairy 7. So that one aspect of Sword and Fairy 7, I really, really like and enjoyed because each character bought its own, um, you could say character and strengths. So um, that aspect is missing. Now, of course, the artificial intelligence in the game, it kind of makes these other two characters on screen accompany you and even aid you in those battles, but hey, they are just bots. You can't switch between these characters. And the upgrade system, well, it, it leaves you asking for a lot more, you know? I mean, there's hardly anything. I mean, you can shop around these villages, but even when you try to shop around these villages, these shopkeepers, they hardly have anything in the inventory. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And these side quests just don't feel as good and rewarding as they should be. Therefore, you know, I tried a few side quests. I just didn't feel like it contributed to the overall story and it added any value. Therefore, I completed this game in like 14, less than 14 hours. <laughs> yeah, that's right, less than 14 hours. But I reckon that even if you do take up those side quests, I think you can comfortably finish this, this particular game in say about 16 to 20 hours between that time. So in terms of, um, Asking for value for money. By the way, speaking of money, it's always on sale, almost now. And uh, if you get a good price on it, I think it's roughly around $10. At that price, I think it justifies the ask, the, the ask of $10. But even then, you know, I mean, we live in a time when um, these action RPGs, they give you at least like 40 hours, 60 hours. Heck, when I played Assassin's Creed Odyssey, I, I got almost 140 hours out of it, yeah? <laughs> so, Talk about the length of a game, that was a really, really long game. Probably one of the longest in the whole Assassin's Creed franchise. So from the money's worth, I think, you know, a lot of people might want more. Personally, I'm not complaining. I, I, I like storage, stories, you know, which are told well, even if it takes like 12 hours, 14 hours. If you have told the story well, it's fine with me. You know, I, I still think that, you know, it's my money's worth. And in terms of story, it gives you your money's worth. It tells a very nice story. The action, I think it's a mixed bag because I didn't really enjoy the upgrade options quite a lot. The action itself was okay. It was entertaining. As far as cutscenes go, they're really well done. Voice acting is stellar. In fact, the facial animations, the voice acting, I think is actually better than Gujian 3 for sure. The expressions especially. And, uh, and overall, I think I really enjoyed this game. And at $10, I think it's your money's worth. So you should definitely give it a try and um, check out Shuan Yuan Chien 7, <laughs> in fact. So that's my two cents on this uh, game. Let me know your thoughts and comments as well. And uh, if you've played this game, drop in a comment by letting me know what you think about it. And if you've liked this video, do hit that like and subscribe button and also that bell icon in case you want to get notified with all my latest videos. Now with that said, it's a wrap for this one. 
and I'll see you lovely folks in my next video. Until that time, take care, stay safe, and may God bless you all.